National Public Radio prides itself on nonpartisanship to the extent that it can frustrate more liberal listeners. But now a tense exchange with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo shows that in the Trump era, the network's quest for balance might not be tenable. Adam has more. Good morning, everyone. Sometimes Mike Pompeo is friendly with the press, and sometimes he's not. You all keep repeating that line as if you're working for the DNC. Pompeo wasn't pleased when PBS's Judy Woodruff noted there's no proof Joe Biden acted improperly regarding the Ukraine, or when Nashville reporter Nancy Amons pressed him on the same topic. You should be careful about things you assert as facts before you state them. But in a recent interview with NPR, Pompeo took the testiness up a notch. After asking about Iran policy, host Mary Louise Kelly shifted gears and asked Pompeo if he owes an apology to Marie Yovanovitch, the ousted ambassador to Ukraine. I agreed to come on your show today to talk about Iran. I, just I don't confirmed have, with I just your staff have, last night that I would talk I, about I just Iran don't have and Ukraine. anything else to say about that. Kelly kept pushing. People have resigned from this department under your leadership saying you should stand up. Well, for know. the diplomats I, I who work who, here. I don't know who these unnamed sources are you're referring to. When these I talk, are not when unnamed I talk, sources. When I this talk is to your senior here, advisor, Michael McKinley. I have defended every State Department official, the team that works here, Sir, is doing amazing work around the world. respectfully, where have you defended Marie Ivanovich? Afterward, Kelly says Pompeo asked to speak with her in private and then ranted for about 10 minutes. He used the F word uh, and many others. He asked if I could find Ukraine on a map. I pointed to Ukraine. He put the map away. He said... People will hear about this. Later, he released a statement accusing Kelly of lying about the scope of the interview and agreeing to keep their meeting after the interview off the record. Kelly insists she never went off the record and produced emails that show she never said she'd avoid Ukraine either. That's the thing. She had all of the of the backup data, all of the communications with his staff. She is steely tough. I, I mean, I happened to hear this when I was driving home last Friday night after this show. It was a great interview. It was a really, really good interview, and I, I would not be surprised if Pompeo, when he said, you know, people are going to hear about this, I think that might have been the point. He wanted to impress, I think, his boss, the president, who went on to say, oh, you know, Pompeo did a great job her. on her. Right, yeah. right. And uh, I, I think it was sort of posturing to show how tough he could be with the fake news media, even though none of the news that was uh, produced in the interview was fake at all. It was, it was really, really good. And I'm very happy to see NPR defending yes. her Absolutely. as unequivocally as they have been. That's the right move. Mm -hmm. I thought I, it was. I, oh, go ahead, Dan. Oh, I was just going to say I was happy to see NPR defending her as well. I just hope that we don't see over time them cowering in a corner as the administration, because that's kind of been their 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 history during the Trump administration. Not Mary Louise Kelly. That was a spectacular interview. Uh, I've listened to it twice, and I'm going to engage in a little speculation here. I think Pompeo planned this ahead of time. Uh, yeah. I, I think that he he knew she was going to ask about Ukraine, uh, that we know that. Uh, and uh, I think his whole nutty was a, a, a set piece. How many people have a map of Europe with none of the country <laughs> names That's on true. it ready to pull out? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it was a setup. Yeah. Mm. You know, uh, I thought uh, his behavior was reprehensible, inexcusable. I think he owes her an apology. I don't think it'll come. I think this is nothing new for the Trump administration. I think uh, President Trump defending him or making that, uh, you know, sort of wise guy comment when he was with Mike Pompeo later was despicable. And I think that... Um, it has given uh, President Trump's behavior and now one member of his administration, it's happened with others, uh, licensed to other people in this government and other governments and governments around the world to um, say that it's fake news and to abuse the media. And I think it's a tragedy. I would say that. It, That's what I think. <laughs> it feels like a talking point now because there was Manu Raju trying to ask a reasonable, respectful question to a Senate member. And she came at him. Don't you say anything to me, you liberal hack. That's not at all how he came toward her. In both instances, he wasn't even, you know, being tough. He just asked her, you know, a random yeah. question of the day that would make sense. Um, in this case, Mary Louise Kelly stands her ground, but she is always respectful. Listen, I heard the interview she did with her boss. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes. With her boss. She was when, the same kind of, yeah. yeah, she's the same kind of just steadfast, respectful, Mom, me, yeah. but she's, 
you know, ask the questions. If you don't want to answer them, that's okay. But don't lie, but this has become the tradition now. One you know? part of the story that we should, we should mm -hmm. flick in is that Trump then uh, approvingly oh, yeah. retweeted this tweet that questioned mm -hmm. right, why NPR right. and public radio get federal funding. And he said something, you know, good and question, exclamation point. Oh, right, that's right. I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, it wasn't going to be uh, Louise Kelly, right, but another NPR reporter, she lost her seat on the plane. So it will be interesting to see if there are ripple yeah. effects that make it more challenging for NPR to do their jobs. Yeah, that interview was something that journalism students ought to listen to. Mine yeah. did. She was prepared for every single thing he said. Yeah. Like when he said these unnamed sources. Well, it was actually this, mm -hmm. uh, this guy who said it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a model of how to do an interview. And she never raised her voice. Mm -hmm. She never was disrespectful. Not at it all. was terrific. Mm -hmm. You know, there was one other little thing in there that, that uh, you know, he put conditions on this interview. Yeah, uh, You could tell from from you know, uh, you only wanted to. I only wanted to talk about he Iran. He did. Yeah, he claimed, right, but, right. He claimed. But the right. staff said. But that's yeah. the kind of thing. That's the kind of access. When you get access, they put conditions on these kinds of things, and it's very difficult. But they had them in this case. But, the, but they, they had, had the emails. Right. Supposedly. No, she had the emails. Right, right, right. right. All right. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs>